Keyheart here. Today I wanted to talk about how to help an older sibling adjust to bringing a new baby into the family. So um, I have a two-year-old and I also have a, uh, how old is he now? He's eight weeks. Oh my god. Time goes by so flat, fast. It feels like I just had him. But he's eight weeks old and I have a two-year-old also. And so, um, People have commented that she's very well adjusted. She seems to get along with her brother very well. She doesn't seem to be jealous. Um, and a lot of people have asked me, how do you do that? <laughs> how do you create a family environment where the older sibling is not jealous of the new baby? And so I wanted to answer that question. I thought, you know, a lot of people might have that same question. So since it appears that so far, you know, we've been successful at it, um, we have their whole lifetimes to go, but <laughs> so far it's been a success. I wanted to share some of my success tips, um, tips that have worked so far and things that we're going to continue to do in the future to make sure that our family did not, dynamic remains healthy. So the first thing I did was I gave our toddler a lot of attention when I was pregnant. And this was really hard to do because I was exhausted during pregnancy. I suffered from um, pregnancy-induced anemia. And so my iron count was really low. So I'm popping iron pills, like, constantly trying to keep my energy up. And, you know, I was just really, really tired. I think another reason I was tired is because I'm a person who is constantly on the go when I'm not pregnant. And so when I was pregnant, I had to become very in tune with my body. Um... I think pregnancy naturally draws women inward so that we become very aware of our body in ways that we haven't been before. And I realized my body was tired. <laughs> and um, I do, you know, I needed to get back into yoga, back into stretching, back into nurturing my body instead of constantly pushing it. So I was really tired during my pregnancy um, a lot of days. And so this was... This was hard to do, but um, I found a way to muster up the strength to do it. Um, at least once a week, I did something special with my daughter, you know, some one-on-one -on -one time where we did something I never, you know, she's never done before. Um, it didn't have to be something amazing. It could be a new park that she's never been to before. It could be um, collecting acorns. One day we went outside and just collected acorns. Another day um, we walked around a new neighborhood. Um, another day I took her to a museum. A museum, I'm sorry. <laughs> I took her to a museum specifically for children. So like I said, it doesn't have to be anything, you know, spectacular. Uh, to a two-year-old, the whole world is new. So you can just choose something simple to do with them. Even if it's an older kid that you're helping to introduce um, a new baby into the dynamic, take them, you know, do something fun with them that they've never done before. Really, to children, the whole world is can be a playground so just choose something they've never done before it doesn't have to be long it can be an hour or two hours and sometimes it may not even seem like your child is all that excited to do it with you it may not even seem like it's having that big of an impact but trust me anytime you spend one-on-one -on -one time with your children whether they're younger or older even if they're adults even if they're babies they notice that is probably the greatest, no probably, forget that, scratch probably, that is the greatest gift you can give to your child is spend one-on-one -on -one time with them, talk to them, um, make eye contact with them, give them your full undivided attention. And in a world where we have so much technology, so many cell phones and we have iPads and, you know, tablets and TV and the internet and computers and video cameras and so many technology items. And I know because I love technology, you know, I'm on my phone a lot and making videos and doing stuff like that. I'm on Facebook and I love social media. But that time that we can kind of put that stuff away and give our children our undivided attention, whether they show you that they like it or not, um, they love it. It nurtures them. It feeds their soul. So that was the main thing I did was direct one-on-one -on -one attention. The second thing we did was get books, um, either from the library or we purchased a few and we got some from Grandma, is, that, is reading them books about a new baby coming. 
Um, even at a young age, I mean, my daughter was, you know, less than two years old during the time I was pregnant. But even then, I felt like it was important to mention baby a lot, to get her adjusted to hearing the word baby, to talk about baby brothers or baby sisters and being a big sister and what does that mean? Um, letting her touch my belly, you know, getting her involved in the process. She went to a few prenatal appointments with me. She went shopping with us when we got things for the baby. Just, you know, don't hide it from them and don't think that just because they're young, they may not understand. Um, like I said, my daughter was less than two, but I feel like on some level, even babies understand language and they understand when you speak to them and I think it's still very important to speak to them so I didn't want the baby to come and then all of a sudden she's learning about the baby and a big sister because we're going to be busy when the baby gets here and um you know not too busy for her but just busy so we may not take the time to do this when the baby comes it's good to prepare them before the baby comes so when the baby comes it's like oh this is what we've been talking about all this time so it's not like a complete shock to them so that was another thing we did um what i do now is when the baby's napping every day i take her aside and we play a game or we read a book um Every day she gets some type of undivided attention from myself or from my husband um, because she is still young. She's only two years old and she's not going to understand that she can't have attention somehow or another. And like I said, it doesn't have to be long. It can be 20 minutes to an hour. You take time aside when the baby's napping, um, have your husband do it. If you, for some reason, can't do it, if you feel like your schedule is so overwhelmed that there's no way you could take that time to do it, have someone else do it. Call on your village. Call on a nana or grandma or uncle or auntie or, a, you know, the godmother. That's what godparents are for. Call on someone else to do it. I think um, undivided attention is best when it comes from the parents. But I know a lot of people have different situations. You know, you may have had the baby early. There may have been complications. There may be reasons why you can't do it, but, you know, call on someone else to do it. Um, another thing that we've done, and this is the fourth tip, so there are lots of, you know, different things you can do. But um, the fourth thing that we've done is I like to stress to her the importance of being a big girl. Um, I'm not forcing her to be older than she is, but I am emphasizing the things that she can do now that she's a toddler. She's not a baby anymore. And um, a lot of older people have given me the advice to baby her as long as we possibly can. And I just don't think that's great advice. <laughs> Why I, while I appreciate them wanting to help. Um, I just don't think that's good advice. I don't think that we need to teach her that she needs to regress to being a baby in order to get our attention. Um, I plan to give my daughter attention for the rest of her life. I plan to be there for her in, in the capacity that's appropriate to her age uh, for the rest of her life, the rest of my life at least. And um, so at two, there are things that she can do now that she couldn't do when she was a baby. She can ride a tricycle. She can start to read books. She can learn her ABCs. Um, we can walk. She can walk now that she's a big girl. She can uh, go to different events that are specifically for toddlers that she couldn't do when she was a baby. So... I like to stress that. I like to stress, oh, you're a big girl. Let's go ride your tricycle. Let's read a book. Let's go to the library. Let's do all these things that you enjoy and you love to do. And this is amazing. You know, like this, at different stages of our lives, we have to let go of, of when we move on to the new stage, there are things we have to let go of, but there are also things that we get to enjoy that we weren't able to enjoy before. So I still hug her, you know, I don't think those are things, and I hold her, and sometimes I still pick her up. I don't think those are things you exclusively do to babies, but I can't coddle her all day. <laughs> that's something you do to a baby, and that's, realistically, that's not something, um, I don't know if you hear the blender in the background, but my husband is making my daughter a smoothie for breakfast right now. 
<laughs> but just in case you hear that, just ignore that. <laughs> but um, so I can't coddle her all day. That's not the stage of life that she's in right now. But I can make it really exciting that she's in this new stage where there's a new, whole new world of things opening up for her. And I want to stress that to her and make that fun, so fun for her that she doesn't even think about being a baby. She doesn't get jealous of the baby because the baby's in the stage that she's already done. She's already been through that stage. And now for her, she's on to new and exciting things. So part of my job as a parent, I feel, is to introduce her to the new and exciting things. And that's what I've been doing. And that's worked really well. My daughter's very intelligent. And so she needs uh, mental stimulation. She needs the stimulation of new things, um, new experiences in order to, to, in order to stay, I guess, healthy, in order to stay balanced. So that's one of the things that we've been doing as well. So those are really the main things we've been doing. And so far, they've worked out pretty well. Um, when my daughter exhibits behavior that that some people would label jealous we try not to label her because we don't know exactly how she's feeling or you know why that behavior came about but we do tell her you know we do sort of talk to her about it and I can't say that she's never exhibited any jealous behavior or any behavior that you could label jealous because she has but it's not very often. It's few and far in between. And her overall experience with the baby is positive. So I would encourage you not to get caught up if, you know, they make a face at the baby once or twice or they, um, or you pick the baby up and they want to be picked up too. I wouldn't make a big deal out of that. Make a big deal out of the times when they're a good big sister, a good big brother. Um, encourage them and show them support so they know what that looks like. They know what it means to be, um, to exhibit positive behavior toward their sibling. If you make a big deal out of the bad behavior, they'll keep doing the bad behavior in order to get more attention. And you know, I don't really get into good and bad behavior, but for the purposes of communicating with other parents, then, you know, I'll use that language so that you all, you understand what I'm talking about. But um, it's best not to label that behavior to them, though, because you don't want them to feel like being frustrated, being sad, being angry is bad. Um, those things aren't, that's not bad. Um, that's just how they're feeling at the time. And as they grow older, we can teach them how to manage those emotions in more positive ways. So, um, like I said, there's been times when she's, you know, wanted to get picked up or wanted something that we were giving to the baby. But overall, she's been like an amazing big sister. She kisses him. She hugs him on a daily basis. She exhibits probably 10 times more positive behavior than negative behavior. The negative behavior isn't even daily. It's, you know, every once in a while. So, and it's an indication to us that we need to step it up as parents and give her even more attention or figure out ways to, to, uh, to make her feel balanced, make her feel like an important part of our family dynamic as well, even as it changes. So I hope that information was helpful. I'm sure as we go along, you know, things, um, I may have more advice. <laughs> we may have more challenges, but so far, doing the things that I talked about in this video, giving her one-on-one -on -one attention, exposing her to new things, encouraging positive behavior. All of that stuff has been working great, and I anticipate that if we continue to do those things, that she'll continue to grow into just a wonderful, wonderful big sister and a great helper and, you know, a wonderful human being. So I hope that advice helps. If you have more than one child please leave comments below and let us know what you do you know all the information all the advice is helpful so see you guys later bye